In this video, we're going to continue with part two on making our athlete wellness dashboard. As a reminder, some of the features of this dashboard are the ability to select an athlete and automatically have all of their data update, as well as selecting the dates that you want to show on your um, readiness chart and having that automatically update, as well as all of the different metrics that you would like to show. This is going to be a really powerful tool. If you are displaying any sort of wellness data for your coaches and need to be able to action on it quickly. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And as a reminder of how far we got in the last video, we worked our way through creating this athlete info tab where we're able to select any of the sport, have an automatic um, age calculator um, using a formula, as well as being able to select whether an athlete is active or inactive with um, a checkbox here on the right side. So for today's video, what we're going to do is create our data as well as um, some of the calculations that are going to be working in our data sheet so that we can pull out the um, information effectively. So all I'm going to do here is just create a new sheet. I'm just going to rename this wellness data because this is where we are going to store our wellness data. And I'm going to copy basically um, a couple of these headers here. So I'm just going to control copy in my wellness data. I'm going to right click and paste column width only. And then I'll paste the actual things here, the, um, the titles. And I'm going to just name my different columns. So I want one for athlete name, one for date, one for inactive, um, then I want sleep, one to 10, um, stress, one to 10, I want mood, one to 10, um, soreness, one to 10, and then an overall readiness score. So this, these are just the ones that I might use. Feel free to use whatever wellness metrics you want. So I'll just copy inactive here, highlight all of these, right click, and I'm going to paste, um, where is it, format only, so it makes everything look the same. So that's part one. Now for part two, I'm going to have a formula in inactive and readiness, so I'm just going to color these a different color so that I know where the formulas are. So let's create some data. I'm going to take the names of my athletes here, and copy them, and I'll just paste them in here. Um, I'm gonna just paste, sorry, I'm gonna just paste them, just the text, values only, and I'm going to do this a couple of times. Let's do this um, like maybe one or two more times so that we can get all of our data. So basically what this would represent is um, every time Sydney Smith filled out her wellness survey, we would get a record for that. So for our dates, what we would want is date one and then a later date, a later date, and so on and so forth. So let's create a formula to put all of our dates in. So the first thing we'll want is a master date. So let's choose January 1st. So I'll put 2022 um, 01 01 as our date. And now we're gonna create a formula and the formula is going to look like this, equals count if, open this up, and we're going to count if this range, but I want to lock it in with um, dollar signs around the A1. So I don't want that to change. And then I want to count if we have the name in um, cell um, A2. So basically what this is doing is going from A1 to A2 and counting the number of times it has Sydney Smith. I'll hit enter, and if I drag it down one, now it's going from A1 to A3 and counting the number of times we have Catherine Cart. So basically what I can do here is I can just drag this down all the way to the end of my data, and it will count um, all of the times that we have each of those names. Then if I take this master date and put equals this date locked in, so F4 to lock it in, plus the number of times, that's going to add one day each time. When I hit enter, you can see now we have 
2022, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, all the way down. So all we're doing is just creating a formula to count the number of times that the person is actually in the data and then just adding one day's worth of data um, every time they are in the data. Okay, so I'll just copy these dates and I'm just gonna right click paste them values only in here. You can see that it's pasting as a number. So all I have to do is just format this. I'll format it as my dates and you can see there's all of my dates. Maybe I'll just format it one more time to make it look just a little different. Okay, so that's how we would just kind of create some dates from scratch. The next thing we're gonna do is create some wellness metrics. So for this, what I'm gonna do is use a function called rand between. So I'll type equals rand between. Open this up and it's gonna ask me what my low number is. In this case, we have a one to 10 scale. So I'll put low number of one comma 10 for my high number and I'll hit autofill for that, drag it over um, and then I'll drag it all the way down and just just like that, basically, we've just created some wellness scores. So I'll just copy those and repaste only the values because every time I make a calculation, it would be re-updating that formula and we don't want that. So I'll just put those in the middle. So that's all the data. Now, a couple things we want to do. I want to pull out the value if an athlete is inactive that way later on, if I want to, I can exclude them from any of the calculations. So what this formula is going to look like is equals VLOOKUP, and I open this up, I want to find this name, comma, I want to find it in my athlete info, and I want to return the inactive tab, which is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth column, and then hit false. And I'm going to return that. And right now it is giving me a value of false. And if I were to put this act this athlete to inactive, you can see it would give me a value of true. So what I wanted to show is if this equals false, then I want nothing. Otherwise, I want it to show me true. So I'll type if this equals false, then I don't want it to show anything because that means the, uh, the, um, the athlete is not inactive. So I'm just going to put comma, double quotations for blank. But if it's not false, then it must be true. So it'll show me a value of true. So now you can see when we copy that all the way down, if I were to make the athlete um, basically inactive, you can see now it's giving me a value of true every time that athlete is, in, um, is inactive or is in the data. I'm going to delete all of these because I'm going to write one formula now that does the whole thing. So basically now, if we want to turn this into one formula, I'm going to write one more if statement around it to check to make sure that um, there is a value even in here. So I'll type if, open this up, A2 to A, which is going to be this whole column, does not equal um, blank, double quotations, then I want you to perform this calculation but I'm going to go from A2 to A, so it's going to go all the way down. And then at the end, if it is blank, then comma, I want you to return blank. And the last thing that I can do is wrap this in an array formula. So what the array formula does is just tells this, um, tells Google Sheets that it wants to continue calculating all the time. So if I hit enter, it's going to basically do one formula, but continue to calculate all the way down the sheet. So if I were to make some other athletes um, basically inactive, you can see it's doing the one formula, but calculating every time those athletes are in um, or in inactive. So why this is working 
is because array formula basically says that all of this is treated as an array or a group of values. So if there is in fact a value in a the A column designated by A2 to A does not equal blank, then I want you to perform this calculation on A2 to A. So in the first column, it's performing it on A2, then A3, then A4, etc. Um, we already went through how we're indexing the tenth column. If that equals false, then give us a value of um, blank, otherwise a value of true. If there is nothing in the cell, then give us a value of blank, and then calculate all the way down. So we're going to make these athletes not inactive. So now it cleans up that whole formula. Now the only thing you need to know about this is now I cannot sort this data because this formula lives in the top cell here. Okay, so um, now this data has to stay the way that it is if we are going to sort it. Or this formula always has to like remain in the same spot. So what you could do is potentially drag this to another part of the, um, the data set. Um, but that's the way that that has to, has to work. Now the last thing that we want to do is create a formula that automatically calculates our wellness. So basically what we want is sum of all of this. So I want to score basically out of 40 for our wellness. And if I did that, I could easily just use that sum formula and it would go all the way down. But I want to write one formula and then forget about it. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing again equals if, or sorry, array formula, if a2 to a does not equal blank, basically means is there data, then we can sum this, uh, this row, and then if it uh, is, then we'll return blank. Now, I already know that sum's not going to work, but I want to show you what happens. When I hit enter, you can see that all it's done is just calculated the sum for this first row. Now what I could do is potentially change it so that it's looking at the whole thing, but when I hit enter, what you're going to notice is that it's summed basically all of the values. Okay, so in here, I need a formula that's going to only sum this row. Now, the only way that I know how to do this is to use a formula called matrix multiplication. So I'm going to type the formula in and then explain how it works. So it's M M U L T open that up. And if I use the help here, it's going to ask me what I want the first matrix to be. Well, the first matrix I want to be D two all the way to G. Okay. But I want to make sure that we have number values. So I have to multiply this by one and that change um, basically turns it into a number. Okay. So basically what we're doing here is taking all of these values. A matrix is just a collection of um, rows and columns um, as values. And we're multiplying them by one to make sure that they are a number. And then the second thing we want to do is figure out the matrix that we want to multiply by. So what I want to do is I'm going to use transpose, open this up, and I want to go from basically D2 all the way to G2. And I'm going to put this to the power of zero. So when I put it to the power of zero, Basically what it's now done is taken these four values of 3, 8, 2, and 4 and made them into a value of 1. So what we're doing is taking this first matrix and then multiplying it by four um, values of 1. So we're going to get um, 3 times 1 plus 8 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1. And when I hit enter... Whoops, I'm going to get an error. Hang on a second. It's because I forgot one of the commas. And now what you'll see is it just basically goes through and calculates the, um, the sum at each row. To show you basically what's happening here, I'm going to take pieces of this formula. So if I was to take 
um, D2, or let's do this um, D2. If I go over here and go array formula and just put in that one part, it's going to give me my matrix. Okay, so you can see that it's basically the exact same. And then the second part, if I take this transpose and I put that in an array formula equals array formula, it's going to give me four values of one. So all it's done is basically multiply this by this because there's only four one values to multiply it by. And that gives us our value of 17. Okay, so the main things I want you to take away from this video are how to set up a data set and then using array formula, you can set that up within your data set so that anytime I enter in some new data, let's say Christine Cross, um, hold on, control C, control V, Christine Cross, 2022, let's say 0220, and maybe she had an eight, 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 and 10. You can see this formula is already adding up her wellness so that when I go to pull it into the dashboard, I don't have to do anything else other than just make sure her, da her data is in the data set. Everything else is automatically being calculated in my data sheet. So I'll just delete all of that. You can see it all goes away. So I hope that this video helps you out. When we get to the next video, what we'll start to do is build out the actual um, data tab, or sorry, the um, data filters and the dashboard. So that'll probably take another couple of videos. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.